Welcome to the course of Android Continuous Integration with Docker and Jenkins. In this section, we will talk about build container solution for Android CI. In this video, we're going to learn about everything start from base in order to make it right from the beginning. You know that all the Docker image is built on top of the base image, and we have many different options to choose as a base image, such as Alpha image, which is a minimum Linux distribution, and Ubuntu image, which is a popular Linux distribution, and as well as OpenJDK image, which has OpenJDK included already. And in fact, this OpenJDK image has two different major versions. One is built on top of the Alpine image, which aims for small, and the other one is built on top of the build pack depth image, and the end is built on top of the Debian stretch image. So what is the difference? We're going to talk about Alpan later. Now we're going to check the difference between Ubuntu versus Debian. And we're going to build a Docker image to have the OpenJDK included into the Ubuntu Docker image so that we can compare with the official Docker image of the OpenJDK built on top of the Debian image to see what the difference is. First, let's switch to the terminal and try to see what we have locally on the host machine. Nothing is there, it's empty. And we should create the Docker file in order to build the image. Now let's go to the IDE and open the Docker file we just created. And here we're going to start from the Ubuntu image and uh, with the version 18.04. And that is the latest long-term support version. And now we are going to update the package list and install the OpenJDK from there. And here with a dash Y means that we always accept the questions and uh, with the training command so that we can minimize the layers. Dash dash no install recommends means that we don't want to install the recommended packages. So we only want to install the core minimum requirements so that it's always keep it small. And last, we're going to set the environment variable Java home, which I don't have to talk again. Everyone knows about it. Now we're going to the terminal to build the Docker image. Let's call the image OpenJDK dash Ubuntu and from the current directory where the Docker file is located. Since I don't have any image locally on the host machine, so it's going to pull the Ubuntu image from the Docker hub. Now it's trying to install the OpenJDK package. Might take a while. Now let's check what we have locally. So we have the Ubuntu image pulled from the Docker hub and we have the OpenJDK dash Ubuntu image, which we just built on top of the Ubuntu image and the size is 484 megabytes. Now we want to compare if functionality wise, both are the same. I mean, both have OpenJDK where we are able to call the Java compiler and uh, we have the Java runtime. So what is the difference? The difference many from the size. The Ubuntu one contains the OpenJDK 8. The size is 484 megabytes. And the OpenJDK official image built on top of the Debian image. The version JDK 8, the size is 624 megabytes. And OpenJDK 11, its size is 821 megabytes. So it's bigger and bigger. Of course, again, if functionality wise is the same, then we want the smaller one which is Ubuntu. Now let's take a look at the Linux system requirements. This is one from the Android SDK website. It provides us three different versions, Windows, Mac, Linux. And as we want to run it on the container so that we want to use the Linux version. From the bottom right, you can see that there are two highlights. First, 64-bit distributions capable of running 32-bit applications. All right, second one, GNU C library, aka glibc, 2.19 or later. So these two highlights are fairly important. And later there are some more, such as the RAM requirements, at least four gigabytes and for running the Android SDK and in later, so on and so forth. We will talk about that later. Okay, we have compared Ubuntu and Debian. Then what about Alpine? Why don't we choose Alpine? The answer is clear here. 
because Alpine has no multi-arc support to run the 32-bit applications, and it has muscle-libc instead of glibc. Both of these points are highlighted in the previous Linux system distribution requirements from the Android SDK perspective. And it will lead to the consequence, if we will try to run the Android SDK over here, we will try to, we will probably get stuck on tasks such as merge debug resources. And by the way, how are we going to run the 32-bit applications on the Ubuntu 64-bit distribution? Otherwise, you might encounter problems when running the build tools or platform tools come together with Android SDK on the AMD64 platform. Okay, so we should try to install the multi-arc, which allows us to install the library packages from the multiple architectures on the same machine. Again, let's code. Go to the IDE, and we just need to enable the multi-arc here to and then install the libraries with the 32-bit support. Okay, let's start from the run command line. So we have specified a bunch of the packages here, and uh, let's build the image. Let's call it Android SDK. As we change the run line, that um, it will break the cache and try to rebuild the layer, which takes a bit while. And here's a new image, Android-SDK image we have just built. And the size is 534 megabytes, slightly bigger than before. Try to launch the container and to see, to test if the functionality wise is okay. Here we are, and trying to see if the environment variables is set. And the Java version here is 1.8.0 underscore 191. Now let's switch back to the slide. So no doubt the winner is Ubuntu. We're going to start the Ubuntu as a base image. Specifically, it's Ubuntu 18.04 as a base image and uh, build everything on top of that. 